Hey folks, Ryan Walker, Ozark Smallmouth Alliance, and we're bringing you another OSA 101 fly tying. This time it's going to be the equalizer. <music> So all credit to this fly goes to the guys at Two Fly Fish. Uh, I found it there a few years back and had never really seen it anywhere fished in the Ozarks and started tying it. And it, it's literally one of my will not go anywhere without flies. It's a great general bait, bait fish imitator. You can also uh, probably imitate a crawfish with it if you tie it in the right colors um, and uh, fish it along the bottom. But fished when, especially when smallmouth are keying in on uh, stone rollers or fry of the year, young bass, etc. so on. Um, it fishes really well and it's kind of a cool tie because it's tied on a big wide gap uh, worm hook. Uh, we're gonna, this one's tied on a size 4 aught. We're gonna be tying the one today on a uh, size 2 aught Eagle Claw Laser Sharp extra wide gap worm hook. Um, the uh, uh, Senyo's Laser Dub is all bulked up there on the head and sucks up a lot of water and really balloons out a lot in the uh, in the in the water and I don't know if you how well you can tell but um, it's keel weighted and you'll see that when we get into tying it and we've wrapped some sparkle braid around it and I coated the bottom of that sparkle braid with uh, a UV resin of your choice I'm using loon but uh, let's get into the materials list for this fly yeah All right, so I always start with the, the hook at kind of an angle like that. And that's so that I can uh, wrap, uh, wrap that. Actually, I'm going to turn it a little different angle. Yeah, just like that so I can put the lead on it. But we're going to start our thread, get a good thread base built up. One, one uh, material I missed was the sparkle braid that I'm going to use for covering the body. We get our lead wire. And you can weight this fly however you want. I'm gonna I'm gonna weight it pretty heavy. I want it to get down and I want it to ride right so I'm gonna push that forward. I'm gonna take it up just to where the uh, the bend starts going up just giving myself enough room to put some materials in front of it. Helicopter that off. Squeeze that lead together really good. Then wrap it up. You want to dam up the front of these to, to so your material, your uh, sparkle braid will ramp off of it. Alright, so we got that done. Next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to put some craft fur in front of this for the underwing, for the belly of the fly actually. So I'm going to move the fly to where it's back out there um, with craft fur. Now we're going to whip finish this off so we can move the move the uh, thread up. To this little bend right here. Just a couple because we'll put a little bit of zap gap on it. just gives it a little bit more durability. So the next thing you want to do 
We're going to start our thread right here on the bend or on the, the eye point of this hook. And this part can be tricky. You'll get it eventually. Now it's time for some flash. Again, pick your colors to match. Use as little or as much as you want. I find the easiest way to do that is to get my strands, double it up on the thread like so, come down on top, catch it to where it lays back straight, and then cover it. Come back in and give that a snip. Trim it off. Go. Yep. Now we want to get our second color, or the you know the top of the fly, the back of the fly. Again, I'm doing a little baby bass here, so. This is the extra select craft fur. If you're playing along at home. Really what I want, I don't want that to go into the eye of the hook. So I'm going to do a loose wrap and another loose wrap and just pull it back ever so slightly and then gradually tighten your, tighten your, tighten your uh, wraps down. Now that we've got that tightened off, we're going to whip finish, and this is where we'll put our GSP on. And again, right here, we're going to put a little bit of zap the gap. Give that a minute to dry. Dry. Okay, a word about GSP. This is super strong, man. It's gel spun thread. Um, super, super strong. Good for uh, bearing down hard on materials, which is why we're going to use it when we put the, the senyos on. But uh, don't use your good scissors to cut it. Either borrow a buddy's or uh, use an old pair. If you borrow a buddy, make sure he isn't close to you. We're going to get this attached. Get it wrapped back over. Now what I want to do right here is spin this GSP up so I get a, a nice tight thread. It's not loose. And that's going to help me bind up my laser dub, which we've got right here. So I always mix the laser dub up, getting some of those big pieces out of it. Really what we're going to do with this thing is we're just going to wrap it around the hook almost like we would some deer hair. And don't don't be afraid. If you're going to skimp on anywhere on this, skimp on the bottom, but don't be afraid to use a lot of this. You want a big profile head. You want this material to soak up a bunch of water so A, it gets down, and B, it, it, it just puffs and looks alive in the water. So what we're going to do is just lay it on the top, kind of get it around that little bend and take two loose wraps. So we get our deer hair out of there, or our craft fur out of there. Take two loose wraps around once, twice, and then pull down hard to get it. We're going to get this worked back. Now, if you've got a bodkin, in the eye that hook will fit. Work that laser dub back. 
and then give it a yarp, sharp yank to pull it up. Let me get ready for your uh, your second. your second color. I'm going to come in with some brown that has purple in it just because I like purple. To work a little bit to get if you've done like I just did. Closed up the eye a little bit. Don't fear. work it back dam it up in front again you can really yank on this GSP and we can whip finish it try to lay those wraps right down on one top of one another Pull that thing really tight when you're done. I mean, we're going to come back in with some zap a gap. Now, I always take my bodkin, I'll pick that thing out. Get some of the loose stuff off the back. Now, if you got a lot on the bottom like this, Take your scissors, just clear some of that out, just to kind of open that bottom up a little bit. And now I'll come back in now I'll come back in with my marker, start cleaning it up a little bit. Twist those up. Just I just want some lines on it. Now, you can see my bodkins. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's pretty coated up with Zappa Gap. But for flies like this. I'll get it on my. There we go. Just to get a touch on there, just so that GSP stays whipped up. And there you have it, man. Th this fly is so much fun to fish. Um, it, the fish just hammer it. I'll, I'll find places where there's a a. Uh, a shoal coming down into an eddy with a back eddy and I'll cast this fly into the back eddy and just real quick strip it out of the back eddy and get it into the main current um, especially if you've got a plunge pool where it drops down if you can get that fly to swing out of that eddy into the current near that plunge pool a lot of times those fish will just come out and whack and just absolutely hammer it um, they'll chase it a long way too I've had I've had fish chase this fly all the way to my feet and it's you know it's a super easy fly to tie. It's got a few steps that, that might be, you know, a little out of the norm, but uh, you don't have to use any articulation. You don't have to tie two flies at once, and uh, it ties really easily. It's actually, believe it or not, very durable. Um, we did a wet test on this one, and that video is at, uh, you've already seen was at the beginning of, uh, at, uh, at the beginning of, of this video, but it looks really, really good underwater. So, Hey, listen, we love doing these things for you. We've got a few more lined up in the can, um, ready to go out. I know Tim towery has been working on them pretty, pretty feverishly, too, so we'll get some more out for you. Don't forget, Fly Tying White River Brewing, March 9th. Tournament of Bronze is coming up. You're going to get some free stuff for registering for Tournament of Bronze. you got to go see it. The event's on the page. Tournament of Bronze 2K19. Tournament of Bronze 2019. It is going to be a ball. I want this to be one of the biggest kayak fishing tournaments in the region. Um, already got a bunch of cool prizes.
trying to stay local with everything plateau feathercraft jason uh jason uh, vermeeren with uh, 131.4 rod shops tying a bunch of flies for us Derek kern's building us a really cool shadow box i think andrew pennington's gonna be uh gonna be tying some flies to put in that box come on folks let's do it this is gonna be a ton of fun it was a lot of fun last year so uh hey until next time spring's coming i saw some turkeys puffed up out in the field the other day can't be too long looks like we've got okay weather coming here in about 10 days uh, days are already longer fish are already starting to look for uh, look for food um, suspending and uh, fishing uh, only promises to get better from here on out again thank you for everything you allow us to do thank you for for watching these um, as always this will be posted on our YouTube channel Ozark Smallmouth Alliance till next time I'm Ryan Walker free the fighter <laughs>